Hello everyone and welcome back to The Fit Curls. My name is Angela, I'm a fitness professional and a curly hair enthusiast and I use this channel to teach you how to keep your curls in shape. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell next to it so you don't miss a single thing. Now today, as you may have noticed, we've lost some length, we've gained some shape. I was getting so sick of my longer hair, especially in this summer heat, so I decided it was time for a change, and I did that change myself. Ready to see how I did it? Hit that thumbs up, and let's dive in. Time to snip. Clearly, in order to cut my hair, I need scissors. These are Conair 7-inch hairdressing scissors, super sharp, and I will be working on clean, wet hair. I'm doing this cut in three sections, bangs, from the ears down, and from the ears up. I also have my continuous mister filled with distilled water in case my high porosity hair starts getting too dry on me, and a tail comb to keep my sections and cuts nice and clean. No point in delaying the inevitable, so let's do this. I always start with my bangs, and today I'm going for a curtain-style bang. The section I've taken here is triangular from a couple inches behind my hairline to my temples. First thing I have to do is determine how short the shortest piece needs to be. So I finger coil and scrunch to get an idea of how much my curls will spring up as they dry. Then I pick up the clump that will serve as the middle, which will be the shortest point, and make the first cut. I swear... This part always takes the longest because I don't want to screw it up. I second guess the first cut like a thousand times before I ever even use the scissors. Once I've cut that center piece, I use it as my guide to find the angle on either side. Here you can see I'm taking half my hair along with that guide and over directing it all the way across my face before I cut. I'm very, very conservative with the amount I take off because if I leave myself some wiggle room, I can always correct the angle by taking a bit more off the ends. Can't do that if I go too big too soon. And I made the mistake of taking all of that bang section and over-directing it to the second side, which left my bangs a bit too blunt. I fixed it later as I kept snipping. And here's where I ended. Shorter in the middle, tapered to longer pieces, framing my cheekbones. I love them. Now I'm going to put these suckers away and move on to the bottom section. Okay, this section might have made me even more nervous than the bangs, mostly because it's tough to see and reach the back of my head. And how I cut this bottom section will determine the overall length of the cut. So I wanted to make sure I didn't make it choppy or uneven. The only way to fix that would probably be to go shorter than I want to. Honestly, I would suggest that if you're doing this at home, get a sibling, friend, or partner to help you out with the back. I just decided to wing it. After combing it out, I decided that I overall wanted to take about 1.5 inches off, and I wanted it to be a bit longer in the back than the front. So I over-directed my hair forward while turning my head sideways on an angle and took off that one and a half inches section by section. I always made sure my hair was detangled and arranged in a nice straight section to avoid making a frayed looking cut. While curls are relatively forgiving aesthetically, I wanted my ends to still look full and a ragged edge would make them thin and fragile instead. Now here you can see my trademark move that I like to call the please tell me it's even sway. I'm checking over each shoulder and then in front of my collarbone to see if I got both sides the same length. Short answer, nope, not even at all. But thankfully, it was easily evened out with a couple of cuts. Beyond that, I didn't stress too much. I mean, internally, yes, so, so much stress, but not scissor-happy stress. Because I knew I could fix a piece here and there once I styled and dried my curls. I called this good enough and moved on to the last section, the layers. This section contains the lion's share of my hair, and this is where I create the actual shape of my haircut. Since there is so much hair here, I always split it in half. I used to leave all my hair except my bangs down, but that left a huge window open for error, and this gives me at least the illusion of control. Now, I feel the need to reiterate at this point that I am not a professional hairstylist. Everything I've learned is from YouTube tutorials by actual professionals and trial and error on my own head. So this is not a perfect or even pretty process when I do it, and I always know it's at my own risk. Okay, disclaimer done, here's how I do this. 
In order to get the rounded layers I like, I take vertical sections starting from the back and comb them up and forward. By combing up at an angle, I create the layers. Over directing forward means I'm left with more length in the back than the front. I try to take thin enough sections that I only have to cut to my second knuckle. Little tip I picked up from Kaylee Melissa. It makes it easier to get a precise cut and harder to cut myself with the scissors. <laughs> Did that once. It's not an experience I want to repeat. And now on to the point that a lot of you are probably wondering about right now. Why the heck am I cutting my curly hair wet? Well, there are a couple reasons for this. One, I have a lot of hair. So going curl by curl would take me approximately 2,000 years and I do not have the patience or prolonged focus for that. Two, I like to see a really strong and clear shape in my haircut. So cutting it wet is the best way to ensure I get the look I want. And three, I know my own hair. I know where it's curliest versus where it's waviest. I know where it gets heavy and flat and where it practically grows upward. And I know how it dries when I set it. Once it's dry, I always go back in and adjust a piece here and there to refine the dry shape, but I wouldn't get the results I truly want if I didn't cut my hair wet first. So that's why. All right, both sides have been layered up, so now I just briefly double check the stacking before styling. I'm using two of my favorites from Curlsmith to set my curls how I always do, which will give me the right conditions to check and fine tune my shape. Now is not the time for product experiments. Not gonna lie, I'm already enjoying my new ability to use less product thanks to having less hair. As always, I'm brush styling for maximum definition in the least amount of time, and today I'm using the Be Hairful brush. Now, as I styled, I did notice a couple outlying pieces that hadn't quite made the cut, pun somewhat intended, I'm so sorry. So I cut what I noticed and then left it the heck alone. As far as the style itself goes, I'll link a playlist above for you guys so you can check out some of my styling tutorials and Stay tuned for a new one next week. Woohoo! Now that I cut actual bangs again, I like to make sure that they're as defined as possible, so I often finger coil them with a little extra water and the leftover product on my hands after I finish the basic style. It takes some extra time, but I like the finished results a lot better when I do it. After that, I just pop a couple clips in at the crown of my head for volume, and then I am ready to diffuse. Y'all ready for the dry results? Ta-da! At this point, all that's left to do is a little tilt on each side to check how the layers fall and to dry cut any pieces that look out of place. I did wind up only cutting about three clumps off camera. Overall, I am so happy with how this cut turned out. I haven't worn my hair this short in decades, so it will definitely take some getting used to, but I couldn't be more thrilled with my summer hair. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Now, if you've never cut your own hair before and you are really nervous to try this, find an appointment with a professional and tell them what you're looking for. What I went for is tapered or curtain style bangs and round layers ending at about my collarbone length. So if you want this cut, you can ask your stylist for that. Otherwise, feel free to follow the steps that I did. I'm clearly not a professional, but I've been practicing on myself quite a bit and I'm really, really happy with how this cut turned out. And with that, we have come to the end of today's video. What did you guys think? Go ahead and drop a comment down below with any of your thoughts, opinions, and impressions of this video, as well as whether or not you would ever actually try and cut your own hair. I'm always curious and I'd love to hear the discussion in the comments. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more DIY hair solutions like this, hit it with a thumbs up. Not only does it really help to support the video and the channel, but it gives me a better idea of the kind of content you guys wanna see so I can make the Fit Curls the best fit for you. Now, if you haven't already joined the Fit Curls family here on YouTube, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Feel free to share this video with your friends if you enjoyed it. And don't forget to join the Fit Curls family all across social media. I spend the majority of my time on Instagram and TikTok and the content I post there is usually quite a bit different than what you'll see here on YouTube. So make sure you're not missing a thing and join the family everywhere. So with that, thank you guys so, so much for watching this video and continuing to support the Fit Curls. Love your curls, love each other, think critically, and I will see you all next time. Bye.